and welcome back footy fans to another episode of donnie's disposals i'm your host coach donnie hess here back with another afl round review round three we are going to sit down and talk and joining me today a new fresh face joining me as my co-host as one of my as my assistant coach this year for the des moines roosters former denver bulldog former columbus footy player mr ben markham ben great to have you on the podcast sir Happy to be here. Excited. Excited to talk some footy. Well, it's fantastic to have somebody a little bit more local. Usually I'm stuck with us. Usually I have Australians or people throughout the country. So to have somebody in my own time zone makes planning this just a little is bit easier, but we, we won't focus on that a little bit. Let's jump right into it, sir. Round three is what we're going to sit here and talk about. A lot of great footy, a few things off the field that I think we're going to let go because I don't really like talking about some of the more gossipy stuff. So let's jump into it. Just your initial thoughts of round three and some of the results that we had this round. Yeah. So like my big takeaway, uh, as far as, um, I'm, I could tell is defense really matters was kind of a big takeaway for me. Um, I thought it came up pretty clearly in the swans, uh, in the swans loss. And, uh, I thought it came up uh, pretty clearly in the Geelong victory as well. Um, it's one of those things. I think a lot of times people say forwards look bad, but I think, uh, it's not forwards looking bad so much. It's defense looking good. So that was kind of my takeaway, uh, big takeaway from the round is that uh, the the teams that are already demonstrating early defense and an early ability to get back behind the ball, um, it's paying off. So that, yeah. that that would be my big takeaway. Yeah, definitely, for sure. We, we, we've seen some really good defensive performances. So let's jump into it. We have eight games to go through really, really quickly. We'll start off in the Ofer Bowl with both teams going into this game oh with zero wins and Collingwood finally get the O out of the win out of the W column with a 20 point win over the Brisbane Lions 92 72 and another loss for the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba it's got to be really frustrating up in Lions land because many people were talking about this team being a potential grand finalist yeah um shocking truthfully shocking i i was not expecting brisbane not only to lose uh twice in a row after last year's stellar performance but to lose twice in a row at home i mean it feels almost unheard of uh in this day and age of footy with with uh how how good they have been for like what the last five six years mm -hmm. so um really impressive for Collingwood to, to, to get that win but by the same time i feel it's almost a little bit muted because now you're like uh so, so, so you beat an offer, right? Mm -hmm. So you beat a team that's, that's, that's at the bottom of the ladder in a sense. So, um, now will the season bear that out? Are they, are they, I, I don't think Brisbane is, but for the moment, it's like, uh, the victory kind of, you needed to get one, both teams needed that win. And, uh, but but it's almost more of a, a momentum win, start to build some momentum than it is, uh, um, anything empirical because you're, you're, you're beating somebody who hasn't beat anybody. So. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. I lo I love the Nick Dacos moving back more to the fullback line, to the halfback line. I think I think that really is where he he does the most for Collingwood. You definitely saw their pressure kind of get back to the way it was. Brisbane, there's there's just something missing going forward again. They're they're having trouble hitting their forwards. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I I think. Coach Fagan will get it figured out. I think the Lions will right the ship a little bit, but I I, I am a little, little worried. 0 3 to start the season. Can they get the can they get things going here with this kind of reset at gather round? And I think this kind of comes at a perfect time, especially the opponent they get. Maybe, maybe okay. But th there are some people leaning towards the panic button up in Brisbane because an 0 3 start, including two home two home losses, has got to be rather frustrating. We jump over to the start of the two Friday night games as the first one sees Carlton absolutely. Kai Bosch, the Carlton, but Kai Bosch North, 137, 181, a 57 point win for Carlton. And the bye week, coming off the bye week, I was a little interested to see will Carlton come off a little rusty? They looked absolutely scintillating. This Carlton team got Jacob Wiedering back, they got some injuries back. This is a Carlton team that on their day are going to be very, very tough to beat. 
Oh, I agree. Um, at this, <laughs> uh, it's almost embarrassing to say I, I try to catch every footy game, but I'm pretty sure I turned this one off about five minutes into the third quarter. I said, "Enough's enough. They're already dead." It was, uh, it was, it, it was getting borderline un, unwatchable. Um, but but I gave it a fair shake. But I I feel that they just have the, this forward line that just feels nigh unstoppable. And I think for a while they had like a, a pink, I think he's a rookie on Mackay. And it just like, if it's the only, it's the only tall you got to, to square up, like it's just going to be a long day. And was it ever a long day? Like, I, I think, I think uh, just like a lot of these games go up, up the, for about the first quarter, um, maybe a little less North was trying to push their luck a little bit. And it was looking like a, like they could hang in there a little bit, maybe round a corner. But I think it's one of those things. It's almost coming from the American side, not to get in too much detail, but uh, growing up a Cleveland Browns fan, if you don't have a culture of winning or a culture of sustained su- success, when one thing goes wrong, the whole thing just comes off the rails, discipline falters, confidence falters, kicks go, handballs go. And I feel like that's just the story of what happened to North. It just, it it just went off the rails and, and, and boy, did Carlton end up just having, it just, it it felt like a field day, almost like a practice. I I hate to say that. I know that's a proud club with a proud history, but it was, it was a rough day for, for North Melbourne fans for sure. I mean, it wasn't a witch's hat situation like a couple of games for West Coast last year, but it it, it got pre- it got pretty bad. Now again, Carlton is very very good when their midfield is absolutely humming. Charlie Kerno and and Harry Mackay are difficult enough to stop as it is, but you add the fact that they're undersized on the defensive end with injuries to Griffin Logan in some of their more key backmen, also losing also losing. Um, um, Ben Mackay uh, in free agency really, really hurts North Melbourne here. So they're going to take their lumps. Again, this is a great Carlton team, but this is one of those Carlton take this. This is a little bit of a, it's, it's a stat filler for a lot of their players that they get a lot of confidence from it and they move, they move on. And for North, you just, you try to find silver linings. Yeah, you try to yeah, find some positives. Lines. I mean, Pink didn't play that badly for facing one of two of the better forwards in the game. Didn't do too badly. Paul Curtis had himself a good game going forward. They put up 81 points, so it, it's nothing to, yep. to sniff yep. at. It's just one of those. Carlton was just too good. North is still in a rebuilding phase. There's still so much young talent on that team. They're going to take their lumps this year. They're going to surprise somebody as the season goes on. North is a team I'm always intrigued by because it Maybe just this depends. Week. Maybe this week. We'll we don't see. know. <laughs> it's it, it definitely be we'll interesting. <laughs> we we can discuss that a little bit later in the burning questions. But let's, we'll we'll hop on the plane. We'll fly out to Optus Stadium for the Friday night, the the evening part of the Friday night footy sees the Fremantle Dockers continue a great start to the season, going three and zero, beating the Adelaide Crows 69-34. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I said that was the final score of a footy game. Thirty four points for this Adelaide Crows team that was prolific last year scoring. The Dockers are humming, and the scary part is this team still has a lot of injuries on this roster. And for for Coach Longmuir, he has got to be just absolutely cheesing happy, three and zero, and still some really good players still to come back into this into this lineup. Yeah, it's almost like uh, to me uh, preseason expectations. I was almost thinking Adelaide was going to take another step and maybe be a top eight team. And I was thinking Frio might even take a step back only based on the preseason games I watched. Mm -hmm. But I think Frio is just feeding us a line. Uh, They did not look like this in any of the preseason games that I watched. And Sarong and uh, Brayshaw are just just a powerhouse duo through the mids. It's just uh, and and uh, uh, alternatively, when you're looking at it from from Adelaide's side, it's uh, like who who is in that midfield that's going to help? Uh, like, I don't think Dawson Dawson. I don't think he's a pure midfielder. Is basically what I feel the consensus is going to come down to. 
And uh, I think uh, a Crouch needs some help. And like I don't even know if he can do it for a full season, but boy, does he look good right now. And he has nothing to be ashamed of with his performance. Um, I just think they need to find uh, something something else to throw throw a mix in see what's working maybe Rochelle something to, to to change it up in that engine room uh from the from Adelaide side but um all all power to to Frio they certainly surprised me and uh, uh I'm happy to see him make make a make a run they're looking really good yeah it's very interesting I, I listened to a couple of podcasts I have a few friends that are huge crows fans and one of the podcasts I was listening to they they, they made the, they made the say that Adelaide almost kind of have they have kind of a one a one wood midfield that they kind of all do the same thing. They're all tough in and under, get the footy. There's no there's none of that silky smooth, get out into space, great kick type of player. Dawson is, but I'm not sure if he's 100 percent ready of being the only one. He almost needs a little bit of help. So do you throw a Saligo in there? Do you throw a Rochelle in there? Do you throw an Isaac Rankin almost a little bit like that, that forward attacker, striker type of that goes in and then pushes forward if they win the footy? So I, I I don't know what mo- what Coach Nix is going to have to do again. He's he's a little bit injury riddled, a little in the back, and the back still has not one hundred percent kind of figured it out. I mean, Keen has and all fantastic. those names are young too. They're yeah, all well, young. When so, Bor- Borlase like, comes in, none Borlase of them comes, are more than four years. Yeah, well, Borlase comes in. He hasn't he hasn't done bad. He didn't do horribly in this game, but it's just there's just no cohesion. This this is a team that it, it's like. I think expectations are kind of weighing him down a little bit. It doesn't help. Tex Walker, I think, is still underdone. I'm not sure why he's still playing. Burgess has come in and played well. Fogarty still really hasn't found his footing this year. Rank, again, Rankin, I think, has played pretty well for the for the time that he has in, but it's just there's no cohesion. There's no con, there's no consistency with this group. Again, I think Fremantle caught Adelaide at just the right time. If Adelaide was humming like they were last year, I think this is a much different game. But this is one of those Adelaide, there's still something missing. There's 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 a few gears that are just not firing at the right time, and we'll have to see how the crows yeah, and it, respond, especially yeah, this it's a weird week, one. It's a with, puzzle. Having that tightness matchup with Melbourne this week. We're going to see can Adelaide hit the reset button at home and get their season back underway because I think another loss at home against Melbourne and you can almost write this season off because 0 and 4 is very difficult to get back just into finals. We're not even talking about the top four on that one. So let's move to what I think is probably one of the most scintillating games of this round season Essendon at Marvel stadium, knock off the saints 71 67 for all of the defensive issues that Essendon had in those first two rounds. This was a very well-played game. Now, again, I know Max King wasn't playing in this game, so there's a little bit of what could have been, but there was Essendon again, that silky run off halfback. They got a lot of speedsters, but just a few things just didn't work in this game. And Essendon really made them pay Jake Stringer. The package as he's called was absolutely fantastic. He's fully fit. He's super dangerous when he's fully fit and Essendon starting to find something. It'll be interesting. Your thoughts on this one. Yeah, it's uh, I feel like it almost hit to me. Uh, you hate to say uh, every player at that level is performing with effort, but I felt like, to me, it just looked like Essendon just had effort ball and they just wanted it in the end, in the in the fourth. They just wanted it more and they just head down footy go and um, impressive win. Um, I think Merritt Merritt's coming into his own as a captain of that club. He certainly looks the part. And uh, I think his work ethic, from what I hear, is is, is top notch, both. Um, on the park and off uh, clearly shows in the game, just high skill level player. And just, uh, um, yeah, they talk about the Essendon edge. And I honestly, going into the week with the drama from the week prior, I was like, what is, is this just a gimmick thing? Just all, It's a lot of talk. Just just play footy. And boy, did they <laughs> they came out and they played footy. And uh, going in, I thought Essendon edge. This is just this is just a gimmick. Too many distractions with just dumb plays and just trying to trying to 
you're not going to make a football player fearful because you're late because you're late hitting them. You're just going to make them angry. Mm-hmm. And I honestly thought the Saints were going to come in and and roll on that game. And um, it just shows I'm I'm a Yank. I don't know what I'm talking about. Like <laughs> Essendon, Essendon deserved that win, and well, and they got it. They just they wanted it more. And I said in I said in last week's podcast, I said keep an eye on this one because I liked I I, I know Essendon again the whole Essendon edge thing and everything like that. And again, I, I think it's a I think it's a little bit it of a just facade. sounds gimmicky. I, I, I don't think know think if that's a, little, a longer range thing or not. They they didn't have they didn't have kind of the edgy part in this game. So I'm almost thinking this is still a little bit of a facade. I, I hate to agree with Tommy Papley, and I know some people on the Essendon side, I, I know I'm a Swans fan, ladies and gentlemen, but this is this is just me being honest, watching this game. There was none of this edgy stuff that they tried to pull against the Swans in the Saints game. They just didn't. So I'm just, I'm, I'm again, it's, it's a little, for me, just seems like a little bit of a facade. But I, like, footy. but I liked what Essendon did more in this game. They let their footy do the talking instead of trying to do this intimidation, late hit crap, that it, extra physical stuff that I just think is not this group's strength. I think when you've got a merit, when you've got a parish, when you've got some of the really good ball movers that you have on this Essendon lineup, and then Lankford kicks goals, string, um, Stringer kicks goals, you've you've got some really good players. Nick Cox, I think, is starting to finally come into his own if he, his body will hold up. This is a very solid Essendon team. This is a team that can push for finals if they get on the right run. The question is, are they going to have idiot moments like they did against the Swans, or are they going to just play footy and try to beat you with their skill? They can do that. I don't think the extra physicality was really worth it. I actually like Draper as, I like Draper as a rock. I think he's actually quite athletic and can do a lot of things that some rocks just can't. So I love this win for him. Like I said, I almost tipped him. I really almost did because I thought the King loss, I think, is going to leave him a little rudderless going forward. Higgins still puts up a good bunch. Butler still just has not found, has not found his thing. And memory, the double-footed jump just seems to always disadvantage him in contests. So sometimes when he doesn't have King to kind of go off of, sometimes he always it's a little bit of a disadvantage. So a, a g- great win by Essendon here. It, it, it's a solid one again. I think the Saints will be stronger this week with with Max King being back. So I think it's just kind of one of those a little bit of fools. Just a real, see. real quick aside, and again, uh, you have to pardon my uh, Yankee uh, <laughs> ignorance. I suppose is <laughs> Essendon age like a new? Is it a new mantra like to this year, or is that something that was like they're revitalizing like an old mantra that's kind of like a club logo? I just I don't know where it came from. I, I think it depends on who you ask. Again, Chris Chris Scott, their coach, was known for his edge when he played with Brisbane and Essendon for a long for the longest time. Again, in the eighties, when it was a much 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 different game, had a little bit of edge to their game. So I, again, I. I, I see it more as a facade right now, unless they're going to become a physical footy team, which again, if you look at their roster, I don't think that's what they're built for. I think they're built as a skill speed team, speed team that can play pretty good defense under, under coach Scott, but we'll have to see how that goes again. We're still early in the season. How, how are the injury things on that one? So for me, I think it's a little bit of a facade. They've have had it in the past, but again, we're talking early nineties, late eighties and even into the seventies when that was almost kind of the norm. So, so we'll go on that. So let's jump over again to Adelaide over well, Mel- where Melbourne has continued after round, after round zero have continued a red hot form as they go over and beat Port Adelaide 96, 89. But I agree with one of the things that I was, I was watching a few of the footy shows over the week is if you look at the statistics Port Adelaide should have won this inside fifties contested possessions. There were so many things that they dominated, but Melbourne just did enough. And without may that's an impressive win on the road at Port at Adelaide. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, absolutely agree. Um, this is another one where I was keen just to watch and see good footy and, I think I think I got I got what I paid for. I think this was one of the games of the week as far as I'm concerned. I think there was hard effort all the way through by both sides and I think what we saw with Melbourne was just like like um Butters is like uh and I, I don't mean this in any way insulting but he's just a, sl- a smaller frame more like a ballerina like there's no way I could ever get my mitts on him right but I mean amazing high skilled player and he can take his licks but when you're looking at that versus like the just the body shape 
of like an Oliver. And, you know, you got uh, uh, who's that other uh, uh, Petraka, you know, coming through there, just just the size. And it's like, well, what what is footy is foot is footy grace or is foot or is footy, you know, hard nosed, take take the hits. And I think both have a place in the modern game. And I think on this day, uh, the the hard nosed footy, the big body clobbering just kind of want out. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that means that's that's the style that always wins. It's just the style that won this day. But boy, I would love to see another rematch. And I hope we get one because both clubs came to play and both clubs gave us, I think, gave us all they had and it was it was it was wonderful to watch it was a fantastic game i i, I would i would say it like this it, it's like watching a couple it's like three escalates because you also have jake viney too who's not super tall but he's 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 built like a brick shit house like literally he is thick and he is strong where it's like it's kind of like escalades versus porsches like that's the difference because if you look at Rosie, you look at Butters, you look at Willem Drew, they're not super big guys. They're they're slender in statue, but they're really quick and they're really agile. The issue is you're going up against a bruising midfield with a Max Gone, who's one of the best rucks in the in the entire competition. So they're having to kind of use up so much extra energy to try to tackle guys that are 40 40 kilograms heavy than heavier than them that wears on you after a while petraka they're bulls oliver is a bull viney is a bull so it's really one of those where you just kind of saw that but again Port Adelaide's slick ball movement it is fun to watch. They're, they're a team that's going to be agile. They just ran into the effectiveness of Melbourne on the day was just a little bit too much. But I agree with you. That is a finals matchup. I would love to see again, both playing fantastic football. It's going to be excellent. And it's great to see Melbourne kind of putting the outside distractions that have kind of happened over the last couple of weeks across and just play footy. It's absolutely magnificent. So We'll go quick on this one. We'll go quick on this next one. Over to Marvel Stadium as the West Coast Eagles get smashed by 76. I know, surprise, surprise, coach. West Coast Eagles getting smashed. I know, West Coast fans. I'm sorry. 106 to 30, the Western Bulldogs put up put up an absolute put up an absolute cracking win on this one. Again, Dougie's too good. Eagles are an absolute shit show let's just be honest they are they're an absolute shit show i'm i'm hearing i'm hearing rumors now a priority pick may come to their may come their way with the afl which i find fascinating that this is one of the richest clubs in the country one of the clubs that has the most money but yet their list management has been absolutely atrocious i know three weeks in a row i'm sorry stop ben your thoughts on this demolishing by the doggies over the eagles so yeah, probably don't want to get too much into it because uh, I know you're gonna. No matter where you go with it, you're gonna have a fan base up in arms. One saying we want to balance competition, but it's like, how are we? Re I, I and maybe it's just an American thing. Thing like how? And I'm saying this as a Cleveland Browns fan. And if you want to talk about mismanaged history, <laughs> boy, we can talk about mismanagement in history. Like, yeah, but uh, I just. My 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 quick thing on on the on those uh, compensatory picks. It's like, why are we rewarding bad decision making with compensatory for, for the sake of the competition? It's like what you end up is where they are, and you always have the next year to try to right that ship, right? Mm -hmm. So take the next year, take your lumps, and you. I'm an amateur athlete, and I hate losing. I hate it. Like, I can't imagine getting paid and having to take a lump, a, a thumping like that on national television and then sit in cameras and have to have, have them ask me about the game. Bontempelli's taken basically half the game off. He's 50 percent CBAs resting up forward, maybe nursing an ankle. I, I don't know. I've just some things I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's like if you know you don't get you don't have a bye week coming up and you can take your captain and just rest them for a half. Like it's almost insulting if you consider yourself a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to go too hard on them because I know they're going, they're, they're, they're taking their lumps. They're a wooden spoon contender and they know they are. And I think they are building, but the talk about compensatory picks and boo hooing bad decision-making and running, we wanting rewarded for it. It's like, 
what what are we doing? It's like it all to 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 me to me it undercuts good competition because you're like, well, I have a safety net. If I I can go all in and if I mess it up, no big deal. We just get some compensatory picks somewhere down the road, and it's very nebulous as to when and who and how it happens. And I know there's an awful lot of history, and I'm probably not suited to talk about it, but. <laughs> From from a from a from an American perspective, and being a, a long suffering Browns fan, West Coast, you guys at least got a championship in the in the last ten years. The Browns have barely seen the playoffs, and if you recall, every playoff thing they've had, is, every playoff scene they've made since I've been alive, has been a thumping, a sound thumping, and I've still never won a compensatory pick. So, but maybe I'm vindictive. I don't know. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Bulldogs clear win, clear roll through. It's, on it's, the not, next. it's not vindictive. And like I said, I, the people that listen to the podcast know I, I for the previous two rounds, I have absolutely, I, I have said they're, they're the masters of their own demise. I think their list management has been woeful. I think the reason that they're in this is because they held on thinking after 18, that they still had a chance for another couple of premierships. 2020 was when the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. And they've been literally nose diving ever since. And there's nothing Adam Simpson can do because literally not only are injuries absolutely destroying his roster, but then again, he's got eight, he's got aged veterans like, like Shuey who was on there for too long and did, wouldn't, wouldn't retire and they wouldn't let him go. They kept having injury after injury after injury. Nick Nat knew he had injuries. Elliot Yo's finally started to find some health. I'll cross my fingers and touch wood on that. He doesn't get hurt, but for three, for two seasons in a row, he plays maybe two matches the entire year. They have list managed horribly. They have drafted horribly. There's no young talent. I feel horrible for Harley Reed because this is going to be at least a couple of years of absolutely atrocious footy. He's a fantastic player. I know in three years, there's going to be calls from Victorian clubs to try to bring him back East. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see how that goes, but doggy's too good. Again, Bond pushes forward, kicks three goals in this game. Trelore has 35 and kicks a goal as well. It was fantastically. Riley Sanders is showing all the praise that 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 um, Bevel threw on him early in the year is warranted. Again, maybe not the greatest competition, but Riley Sanders showed a lot of really good, really good skill in this game. So it'd be fun to watch on that one. We'll jump over to what some people would say one of the shockers of the round is the Richmond Tigers knock off the Red Hot Sydney Swans by five, 82. 277 and as a swan's tragic everybody wants to know how do you take losses i was not as devastated on this loss as some people would say i kind of didn't mind it and again somebody, what are you talking about why do you don't because for me there was so much hype on the sydney swans teams through the first three game through first through the first three games you beat melbourne you beat collingwood okay you beat two really good teams and especially the one on the mcg then you then you kind of you kind of let essendon stay in the game a little bit longer than to than they probably should have this is almost kind of the hey reality check boys reality check Again, Richmond, fantastic. Lynch shows why he's great. Unfortunately, he hurts himself in this game. He's going to be out for a significant amount of time. Volta has a great game and also will be out in the next game. And we still don't know about Dusty Martin. How is, Dil is Dylan Grimes going to be back? So I tip my cap to you, Richmond. You just wanted it more. I congratulate you on a, on a fantastic win. Some reality checks for Sydney a little bit. Um I think it's good. You get West Coast next week in the gather round, so which will be perfect. And then you get to take a bye week. So I think Sydney is still looking perfectly fine. I just think this is a tiny bump in the road. You're not going to win them all. Nobody's going to go undefeated. I'll sit here and say this right now. I don't believe anybody in this comp is going to go undefeated. I don't mind the loss. I'm not going to sit here and stew over it like some people in Sydney Swans land. So your thoughts on this Tiger Swans match? Two thoughts, and they they tie it. They they dovetail perfectly with what you're saying. The first is from a, a, never having been a professional athlete, but listening to plenty of professional athletes. The other guys are getting paid too, and every time you start to have that pride about you or that swagger, and I think the swagger is a good thing. Uh, sports keeps you humble. Sports keeps you humble, and they're getting paid. They're professionals, and they're going to come to play. And as soon as you start chatter about being a top two team or the you know, top top of the ladder three weeks in. It's just bulletin board material. We'll take you down a peg. So yeah, props to props to them uh 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 for that. Props to props to the Tigers for that. And uh um 
Yeah, I lost my train of thought on that second one, but, uh, <laughs> but well, I don't think I don't think we need it. Congratulations to Richmond. It's a uh, it, it was a hard fought game. It's I don't think there's anything anything to to that that, that systemic to the club mm-hmm. at all. Oh, yeah. It's just it's just you showed up, you got beat, yeah. lick lick your wounds, and, and and live to fight another day. Yeah, I mean, oh, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Co- co- the second, co- the second, second, oh. the second second item is just uh, uh, I would look at it this way if I was that coach. Who would you rather lose to? Like, they're Richmond's a decent, they're a decent club. They're not really going to be fighting for a wooden spoon or anything like that. Who would you rather? Would you rather take your lump next week against West Coast? Well, then you really got something to talk about. You know, mm-hmm. would you rather lose against a top team like a Melbourne or a, or a GWS? No, you want to sink those victories early and let them know where you stand. If you got to take a loss, this is a loss to take. Kind of early season, getting your footing, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. Yeah, and just in in huge congratulations to Adam Uze. I mean, he first couple of games didn't go the way he wanted, so to finally get over that hump, he's got his first win of the year again. And like I said, unfortunately, Richmond takes a takes a few losses out of this as well with a couple of injuries that I think is going to hamper them going forward. Unfortunately, Lynch looks like it's in a significant one. It could be two months to three months, unfortunately. And I hate saying that you you really hate losing a linchpin that he is again, not trying the, not trying the, the, the pun there linchpin. I know. Um, But that's a tough loss. That is, that is definitely a tough loss. So we'll go to the Easter Monday matchup. And and as you, sir, I know you are a cat's man. How awesome is this? A 30 point win over your heated rivals, Hawthorne 106 to 70. And it had a lightning delay and a little bit of drama later that we'll that we, we we won't go into with the whole phone whether it was or wasn't is again cats looking good starting off the season very strong. Yeah, I think Hawkins might have just been checking his hair in the reflection for all we know, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're checking the no. weather as 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 the as the the story has come out that it was it was a the phone of the runner, whoever he was talking to, one of the medical person who was allowed to have their phone. He was just showing Hawkins the weather to why that, why that, how long the delay might be is, is from what I'm hearing. Players are curious. Yeah, I get it. It's a lapse in judgment. The rules are in place as the rules. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to, to be questioning Tom Hawkins credibility as a footy player, what he was doing. But um, I think a warning is is appropriate, and I think uh, I think the, they're right on. The rules are in place for a reason, and to safeguard the integrity of the sport, so the right call. But on to the actual game. What a smoky game it was. I was not expecting that type of effort from Hawthorne, and they showed up to play. It's a rivalry game. And the the final score may may look uh may look a little one sided, but those boys they played with heart the entire time. Geelong's just the better side right now. I think Geelong's got the better blend, and the Hawks are still coming along. But um, I I don't think you could ask for any more from an effort perspective, from a coaching perspective. With effort, it was there for the Hawks. You go in, you hang your head high that 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 you played your best footy, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes the best team just wins. And in that case. I think they did. So yeah, definitely for sure. It's I and I know that there's some controversy with the Jack Ginnivan thing. Again, I don't want to just I don't want to discuss that particular topic because I think it's a little it's a little semi-manufactured a little bit. Um it, it's trying to discuss a, a topic whether this kid's getting unfairly umpired. Well, it's they came out with new rules. The umpires are gonna see some things. We won't go into it. Hawthorne, they're they're a, they're a pesky side. They're a side that I know they're going to burn somebody just like they did last year with Collingwood. They're going to find a way to knock off somebody that's not expecting it or takes them lightly. They're, they're tough. Again, they're injury riddled a lot in the back. So it, they, they are a makeshift team right now. I don't think they did too bad. I think the weather kind of even this game out. James Warple had an absolute blinder in this game. 30, I think he had 35 disposals and a goal, a goal as well. Jeremy Cameron and, and Hawkins playing who wants who wants more goals in this game, which is always fantastic to see those two superstars working well. And I'm liking this young midfield for Geelong. Bruin, Parfit, Bruin, Parfit, um, 
the the young ruckman that's come in. I I just think they're starting to they're starting to kind of find it. So no danger, and you still get a nice win, and your midfield plays really really well. There's got to be a lot of confidence in, down in the cattery for sure. So let's jump to it. That is all eight games again. Gold Coast and GWS they got to sit on their couches and enjoy some popcorn over the weekend. So no game there. So we'll jump to what I call the burning questions part of it. These are just some of the a couple of questions I was thinking about over the weekend so we'll start off with brisbane and and i i i hate saying it we're only four or five games into the season is brisbane in a must win situation this weekend or 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 are we jumping too far to conclusions so early in the year so i th- it's i think it's such a tough question again having having played the sport myself but definitely not at that level but for 15 years i kind of reckon they're all must wins right and i think it's uh it's imperative as a player and as an organization to have a very short memory um you need to trust in what you're doing and what you've practiced and if you shuffle too much when you know the skills are there and from I don't see where the skills are lacking when you're seeing the play from last year to this year. It's not an, it doesn't appear to be an effort thing from the players. From what I can see, it doesn't appear to even really be a skill. I mean, I know they were missing uh Lockie Neal. That's a, that's a, that was a big miss and he's probably going to take a minute to find his legs uh, coming back into the side. But uh, one player doesn't make or break a season. And I don't think one game uh, makes or breaks a season until the moment where the math doesn't work and and it does. So it, I think if, if nothing else, I think it, uh, it makes for good, good conversation. The big, what if, you know, what, what, what if North can come in and, and pull off an upset, but from, from inside the institution, I think when you, when you're the coach, when you're, when you're the organization, you have to just keep, keep the ship, uh, keep the ship straight. This is what we practice. This is our modality. This is what we do. And we just need to execute on it better with better effort and, and redouble the effort. But as far as must win, like the math still works. If it doesn't, it's just, there's a lot more smoke and a lot more talk outside of, outside of the clubhouse. Um, but as a player, you can't let that self-doubt creep in. You just have to keep, you have you have to do the work regardless. Mm-hmm. The work has to get done. The season goes on. So yeah. those are my no, thoughts. I, I'm 100% with you. I, I'm more saying it like this. And I agree. I, I heard a podcaster, I heard a podcaster say this and I kind of agree with it is I don't think it's a must win, but it's one of those, if it's a loss to North Melbourne, I mean, I think the panic stations are on like yeah. as, as, as yeah. atrocious as North has. And I don't think North has been super, super bad. I think they've, they've played some teams that have really made them look bad. I think the efforts there, I just think you're dealing with a young squad. The execution sometimes is going to be different. I, this is the first real full preseason you've had Clark, you've had Clarko with you. I, I think there's going to take some, take some time to kind of gel and adjust. But it's the fact that Brisbane had such high expectations. People were talking about them being a premiership team. They're coming off a a season where they got to a premiership and only finished four points behind the eventual premiers Collingwood. So I kind of, I'm not saying it's a must win, but it's one of those, a loss, I think, sends alarm bells throughout Brisbane if you lose this game. I don't think they will, but if it happens, I agree. I think alarm bells and panic sirens are going to go throughout the Brisbane, the Brisbane footy club rooms, because that would be an atrocious loss in a time when you really can't afford it. You need to start getting some momentum, bank some wins earlier in the year before injuries start to kind of injuries sometimes can start to add up. So they're not a young club. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the other thing too. And you've already, like I said, you've already lost Kitty Coleman earlier in the year. So it's one of those where Bris this, I'm not going to say it's a must win, but it's one of those, a loss is devastating. A loss is it's devastating. A, <laughs> I feel, honestly, I feel Brisbane, I feel about Brisbane almost the same way I feel about Geelong. Obviously, I barrack for Geelong, but like proud club, proud history. Um, they've been they've been in, in the hunt for years. And like sometimes it's just a culmination of bad things happen and windows close so quickly. 
And I'm not saying that window has closed. They're going to get some wins. They're too good not to get some wins. There's too much history. But, I mean, just look at Geelong last year. They lost their first three, and everybody was writing them off. And I don't think it's fair to do that to Brisbane. I think they have a little bit more spark. Uh, maybe they didn't lose like they didn't lose an anchor like Geelong lost Selwood. But uh, it it's tough. Every every game you lose, it just makes that road and that climb that much harder. But the the big thing is, no matter where the smoke and the chatter is coming from inside that clubhouse, it's got to be head down and and ears closed to the noise, and you focus on the work and you get the work done because the skill level at Brisbane is still there. It's mm-hmm. still there. It's it's not gone. Percent agree. One hundred percent agree. So we'll move on to the second question. We go from a little bit of the negative to a positive, and as we kind of said, Fremantle has done. As it's kind of shocked some people. I don't think many people expected them to be three and zero after the first three rounds. So they've been Fremantle has been the pleasant surprise so far of the competition. I, I we're kind of grabbing our crystal ball here a little bit. Does this team have enough to make finals, knowing that they still have some really good players still to come back in this roster, or is it still a little too early for us to be making calls of Fremantle's gonna make finals this year? Yeah. So. Like, um, uh, uh, if you look holistically at it, I think we need more data, but I think, I mean, we, we, we can't sit on our hands while we wait though. The speculations have the fun. It's why we love the sport. Right. And, but when you look at the wins, right, their wins against the lions, well, the lions haven't won anything. Right. The, the, the Lions are an offer. They're they're, te- they're technically fighting for a, for a wooden spoon at the moment. Again, very early. Our expectations, we still think they're going to pull pull themselves up at some point to some degree of uh, uh, of competition, if not top eight, certainly closer to that eight to ten range minimum. But they're an offer. And so so Frio has a win there. Adelaide. Right. right. OK. Uh, they, Adelaide dropped the ball. Well, what well, we thought we thought. Adelaide's going to be so there's this expectation but what is Adelaide it is they they only have one the one win so again it's a small sample size so it's hard to say but I mean you could say the same thing about the cats with their wins over uh St. Kilda and uh and um uh and the Lions right and Hawthorne is like well that's great you're undefeated but who are you beating? Like it's not it's not like these wins are against you know uh, say, say say the D's or uh, they're 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 pulling off wins against uh, GWS. So long season, you're grateful for the momentum. You chalk the wins. You're grateful for the wins. But there, I mean, it's the season's long and it's a lot of work between here and the top eight. But um, I'd rather be uh, sitting three and zero and speculating than zero and three and speculating. One hundred percent agree. And the third, the third team that they beat is North Melbourne. So it's you kind of look at it, again. It's it's a little bit of who who they've played to as well. So I, I'm with you on that. One. I still think it's a little too early. Let's let's get about seven or eight games in. Let's get a little bit more data points. Let's see where they are sitting, where they're sitting on the ladder before we start jumping to conclusions. But again. Happy for Fremantle. I, I think I think last year was a little bit of, of a disappointment for many of my Fremantle friends that I have. So it's, I'm happy to see them start off the season quite well. So we'll jump back to what I think would probably be your expertise, and that is your Geelong Cats. And I always like to do a question about my co-host favorite team. So the Cats have begun very well. Again, three and zero wins over Saint wins over Saint Kilda, Adelaide, and now Hawthorne. Um, is confidence high that the Cats will make finals again this year, or are we kind of like Fremantle where, well, let's pump the brakes on finals. We're three games through the season. Well, uh, uh, so it's it's hard because you, you always have to check for the homerism, right, as you would say in the U.S. <laughs> like there's always that, that little bit. But by the same token, I feel if anybody walks with trepidation, it's a Cleveland Browns fan. Like – we just we we don't trust to hope at all, and so it's the same the same thing. You look at who they beat, and it's like, well, Hawthorne's probably middling, you know, maybe maybe they scratch the eight, but they're probably a ten to twelve ish, and then uh, uh, Adelaide and they, they aren't looking so great, you know. So my big thing is when I watch the games, right? Watch mm-hmm. the games, watch the effort, and to me, what it looks like. And again, small data set. This is my team. 
it looks like they come out guns blazing almost i feel like i do as a 40 year old amateur footy player and i'm good for about eight to ten minutes and i think for a professional they extend that to about two quarters and they come out after halftime and it becomes a it we're hanging on for dear life to close this puppy out. And these teams, these younger teams are just rallying and rallying. Now the defense is holding and we've got some great, great, great defensive players. We've got the Coning back there. We've got Hawkins back there. And uh, 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 it's, it's looking, it, it's looking if the defense holds, but it's always a question of, of if, if the defense holds and, uh, and not, uh, the pressure just isn't the same. The energy isn't the same. And I think it's just it's it's just veterans on their last leg and they can come out fast and they can come out hot. And then they're just you just you're a pit bull and you hold on and you hope that you can shout it to the youth running through the through the guts to get it done because you just don't have the breath or the legs or the stamina or whatever it is. Does that get you to the eight with the discipline that they have and the history that they have and they know how to win and that's so important? Sure. But do they look like, to me, do they look like a Swannies? Do they look like a GWS? N- not to me, but I'm almost still, I- I- I'm so jaded by my sports history. I may be too <laughs> afraid to hope. So I want them to get there. I'm trusting in Scott to get them there. He's an amazing coach. Um, but Boy, does that fourth quarter look an awful different from the first quarter in every single one of these games. Every one of them. Watch the first quarter. Watch the fourth quarter. It's a different Cats team. Mm-hmm. It's a different yeah. Cats team. 100% with you. And and, and coming from a, a neutral on, on this particular topic, I I was I, I was bullish on the Cats this year. I know some people were, were talking about them staying out of the finals or maybe even decreasing. I was bullish that a year out, th- this is too this is too good a club. That it's too well run. You've got too many good experienced guys in Dangerfield and Hawkins and Stewart and Blitzaz. You've got guys that have been through the wars before. I think this is a Cats team. I, I honestly. I'm pretty confident they feel that as long as they don't get with a rash of injuries, like if Hawkins, Cameron, Danger, Stewart all go down with injury, then I'd be concerned. But if if they stay relatively healthy, this is a good Cats team. I think they've got the list. They can make finals. I I don't know how far they'll go in finals again at all. Just depend on matchups and, and what type of teams you're going to see in there. But I'm I'm bullish on this Cats team. I've liked what I've seen again. It's one of those where they just they do things right. Coach Scott has has this group very, very, very well disciplined. And when you have Tommy Stewart on the back, you know you've got one of the best defenders in the entire comp back there. So love the Cats. I, I think they're going to be very, very strong this year unless the injury bug bites them. So we'll jump to the last question, and that is, and I love, I love going to this, is with Gather Round this weekend, and I'm so excited for this because all nine games are going to be in the Adelaide, uh, in the Adelaide area, a couple up in Mount Baca, a couple at Norwood, but most of them are going to be on the hallowed grounds of the Adelaide Oval. What is a game? Let's, let's take the cats out for just a second, and I will take my swans out when we talk about this. What's a couple of games you're going to sit down with your popcorn and watch because they are very, very, there's some very, very intriguing matchups this particular round. Yeah, I had it pulled up and then uh, uh, <laughs> because of changing circumstances, I don't have the the games up anymore. So I'm a little unprepared for this final question. Well, here, here I, will, boy, I will run you through the nine games. First off, tomorrow morning, we'll see the Adelaide Crows take on Melbourne, Brisbane take on North Melbourne, Port Adelaide take on Essendon, West Coast v. Sydney, Fremantle v. Carlton, Western Bulldogs v. Geelong Cats, Gold Coast v. GWS Giants, Richmond v. St. Kilda, and Collingwood v. Hawthorne. So yeah. I will, if you want, I'll go, I'll go quickly first because because a couple of games that really got my ears perked up on this. And that is the first game because I want to see how Adelaide comes out. Because if if Adelaide puts on a performance like they did against Fremantle, Melbourne is going to absolutely smash them. And I think it's an that's an intriguing game because under the lights at the Adelaide Oval, the Crows will find the Crows, I think, will find a way. I think this is going to be a super competitive game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. If the crows come up, if they if they don't come with their best, I think the D's are too good. And the other one that scratches my fancy is Fremantle v. Carlton because you've got a couple of really you got a really good defensive team and a really good forward line. 
How's that going to mash up? And midfield battle of so many superstars, Brayshaw, Sarong, Cripps. I mean, OMG, that's going to be so much fun. That one could be game of the round for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm right there with you. So I think speaking to the question prior, uh, yeah, I think we have some real competition in the in the in the heart of that schedule. So the Frio Carlton ma uh, matchup, like you said, um, two undefeateds, and s someone's losing on the day. That's the glory of sport. Unless and then draw. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the one thing I keep I keep hearing people say. That. I was like, it's the one thing about footy that always baffles me. It's like you do have the draw, so technically they could get a draw, and nobody gets an L. So <laughs> sorry. I've never seen one live happen. I know they do. I've just, I, I haven't seen one yet. Uh, I, I would be amazed. And, and you know what, if this, if this part of the season, if it were to happen, that could be the game. They're both undefeated. Both their midfielders are just cracking on all cylinders. They both look so good. Uh, so I think I'm very intrigued by that only because we had the discussion about, well, who have you played and how are you undefeated? Like the, the, the quality of the competition and following that up Geelong and, and, and the Bulldogs. You know, you got you got two. I um, it if the Bulldogs are healthy, if Bonampelli is healthy, that's going to be a game because I feel like they got a little more run in them than maybe the Bulldogs do. But if the Bulldogs jump out early and the or if the Cats pull out or come out early and blazing and can they hold on to a lead and just hold hold through? Mm -hmm. But the Bulldogs are going to likely charge back in the fourth and we'll have to see uh if the cats have have that grit and have if the youth can kind of sustain and and, and learn and, and take this season as a learning and 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 pull through it and then i think the game following that even with the with gold coast uh they're in an interesting yeah. spot so yeah and that's up in mount barker too so that should that should be quite the interesting one so again i i don't think there's really a bad matchup i think there's a couple of games that could get ugly but i don't think there's like a bad matchup here richmond st kilda i think has a ton of intrigue because richmond is hurt st kilda is getting a little st kilda is getting max king getting max king back collingwood hawthorne with ginevan facing his old his old team to end the round i think there's there's a lot of intrigue in that a lot one. of intrigue port adelaide essendon i think has gotten spice it is going to be a spicy one i think that one's going to be fun does essendon bring the edge against the the slick quick ball moving port adelaide middies it'll be fun it'll be fun on that one so it's it, there there isn't a bad matchup and again it, maybe it's a little bit of the swans in me that i don't mind the west coast matchup for this one oh, it's a heck of even, a week even, it's even up in matt week, barker buddy. and and the fact that they have the buy round the next week is, is kind of is kind of perfect and john longmire has already announced that taylor adams will make his swans debut this round so i'm i'm excited to see taylor adams in the red and white and the best part is he gets a bye week after this to to to, to heal up in case there's any issues. So let's go to the next part. I kind of take over the podcast just for a little bit and I do a team of the week. I kind of, I have my metrics that I kind of go through. So I kind of lean a little bit more on goal scoring and, and scoring, scoring um, involvements just to kind of give us a little bit of, of differentiation. I don't just go 40 disposals you're in. So I'm going to do my team of the week and then I'd love to hear what you think of it. So we'll start off on defense again. We're, we're both coaches. Uh, we'll start on the defensive side of the ball at fullback. We'll see Tom Stewart, uh, Tom Stewart of the Geelong cats, Fremantle's Luke Ryan and Sydney's Nick Blakey on the halfback line. She's Jack Sinclair of the St. Kilda Saints, Essendon's Andrew McGraw and Port Adelaide's Dan Houston. We jump into the mids where our ruck is the Western Bulldogs, Timmy English, on the wings, sees Brisbane's Hugh McCluggage and the Western Bulldogs' Harvey Gallagher. And in the centers, we see Sydney's Isaac Heaney, the Western Bulldogs' Marcus Bontempelli, and Hawthorne's James Warple. Up to the forward line, at the half-forward line, we have Collingwood's Jamie Elliott, St. Kilda's Jack Higgins, and Carlton's Charlie Kerno at the full forward line sees Harry McKay of the Carlton Blues, Geelong's Tommy Hawkins, and also Geelong's Ollie Henry. We go to the bench where I have a defender, a ruck, a midfielder, and a forward. I do all of them just to kind of give a little bit of love to the ruck too, instead of just throwing midfielders like the AA, whoops, failed shot, sorry. So on the defensive side, on the defensive side, on the on the bench, we see Essendon's Dyson Heppel. At the ruck, we see Melbourne's Max Gone. At the midfielder, Richmond's Tim Taranto. And the forward, North Melbourne's Paul Curtis. So I know that's a lot of names. Really quickly, your thoughts on the team of the week, girl, so from what you heard. 
I, th- I think it's a little interesting, a little spicy that you're putting Bonampelli in the mids when he only had 50% center bounce <laughs> attendances against the against the poor uh, poor West Coast Eagles. Not 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 to turn the knife too hard with that with That's with fine. that club, but may, maybe maybe give him a shot at the forward line. <laughs> I mean, he scored. I think he had three, maybe four goals, three goals up there. Yep. Yeah, just three. just yep. phenomenal. Um, but yeah, only 50. 50 percent center bounce of clear uh center bounce uh attendances and and still getting uh getting named in the team of the week that's that's a little spicy <laughs> yeah it's it's always interesting again everybody takes everybody takes it different i remember my in the first round my carlton guy gave me a little bit of stuff because harry mckay wasn't in and he had the same amount of goals as danaher and he kind of he brought it in and, and i said i i appreciate good banter on it i really do like if you come with like good solid reasonings it's like i've been called a flog before for putting somebody in and they go well that's not exactly like an argument that's just a name call so as i tell most people most week if you come with a real reason like like a statistical reason or 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 a good solid backing to it i will listen to it i'll take it into my analytics and i'll throw it in i'm more than willing but if you just come at me with name callings and calling me an idiot, well, it's probably not going to get you what you what you actually want. So, Quantum <laughs> is a certified star. It's just interesting if there was ever oh, yeah. a week you could get forward. <laughs> yeah, and I try I try to have forward forwards, not mid forwards. I it's one of my pet peeves it's with fair. the a, with fair. the with the AA. Like I'm one of those. I do my own uh, all Australian, and I tell people I will not put a midfielder that plays. 50% or more in the midfield as a forward. I want forwards that are 60 per 51 or more forwards because they actually play forward. They're not a midfielder. I'm not just putting a midfielder in the forward line just to squeeze them in. Okay. I, I Did don't. You, get, you went through the names pretty fast. Did you get both the uh, Carlson guys up there? Because uh, the, Perno and Makai. Yes, I did. Okay, because both I both of them had a in the half four, kind of the center half forward, and Charlie. And the only the only thing I look at it though is Harry McKay and Tom Hawkins in the full forward line. You really don't have another crumbing, crumbing pocket player. So you wouldn't like, need one. You're flying. Yeah, pretty much. Well, pretty much. And you have Charlie Kerno. I mean, you could if you really wanted to, you could switch Jack Higgins to the back pocket and move move Harry McKay up and have McKay and Kerno with Elliot being able to kind of crumb off those two. So I think you'd be just, fine, just let but... Bont, <laughs> but just put Bont full, uh, forward for fifty percent of the time, and you're fine. You already have it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. So. <laughs> That's that's absolutely fantastic. And then we always end the podcast. We're going to go through and we'll do tips. I, I don't put any credit in. I don't write this down. It's just for fun. So with the game between Adelaide and Melbourne, as we're recording, probably only about six hours away, let's go through it. Your tip, who do you like, Melbourne or Adelaide? It's got to be Melbourne by a margin. By a mar- I, got, I, I hope the best for Adelaide, but I, I think it's going to be a – Lambs to the slaughter. Sadly, I am with you on this one. As as, as my Crowy supporters that I that I know that follow me, I I would love to tip you guys in this one, but I'm 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 feeling Melbourne a little bit more. I think there's just something not 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 right right now in Crow's land, and I hope it gets fixed. But D's just too good on this one. Brisbane v North at the beloved Norwood at the beloved Norwood Oval. I think Brisbane win this one, and Brisbane win this one big. They get their confidence back, but. I'm I'm gonna watch this one because uh, North just has that feeling that they're gonna. Put, I think they might put a scare into Brisbane early. Yeah, it's it's gonna be an interesting watch. I'm with you. I think I, I don't know what it is. I think it's almost just I stand on tradition and I stand behind experience. And Brisbane has it, so I'm with Brisbane. But like, prove it to like prove it like they they zero and three. Prove it. Prove the experience. Exactly. But I'm with you. I'm, I'm tipping Brisbane. Yep. The cracking, the cracking one to end Friday night footy is Port Adelaide host Essendon at the Adelaide Oval. Who, who do you like in this one? Oh, well, I Port. I, I, th- I, th- I think the when you're looking at how how Port played against the D's and still managed to lose, it's almost a fluke, or it feels like it's almost a fluke. <laughs> and uh, again. Uh, uh, Essendon's a proud club, long history, most championships. I I, I get it. It's, I don't think they. I don't think that they're they're a top four team. And I I at this point, given the games we've gotten to see, I think Port is, and mm-hmm. I think it'll I think it'll be in the proving. I think they'll come out, and I think this is going to be 
pr- pretty similar to the uh, to the D's game. It's just gonna take care of business, get it done. Yeah, I I have, I have poured out late in this one, but this one I'm gonna keep an eye on because Essendon, if if they get the right run. Could they catch Port Adelaide a little bit weakened after a tough opponent the previous week? We'll have to see. Can Essendon capitalize on maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a bruised Port Adelaide team? I think Port win this one, but I'm keeping an eye on this one. I think Essendon could pull the upset if if conditions are perfect. I'm not even going to ask Swans win this one. I'm not even going to ask this one because I know Swan should win this one. I and- week. Hopefully it's not another 200 point win like it was last year on that one. So we jumped to it. Uh, the, what we both kind of said was a game where we've highly anticipated for Fremantle v Carlton at the Adelaide Oval. Who do you like in this one? This is a tough one. And I think I'm going to, it's a coin flip, but I, if I have to lean, I'm going to lean with the team that made the eight last year. Yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Carlton. And, uh, but boy, I'm not, I wouldn't, I'm, there's no shockers in this one. Whoever wins earns it and, 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 and they win it rightly. It's going to, I think this is probably game of the week. Yeah. I 100% with you. I think Carl, I think Carlton's forward line is going to give this little bit under man docker side. I think the midfield battle is even, I think there's just a little too much talent on Carlton on this one. But again, this one has just got me thoroughly intrigued on this one because if Fremantle pull a shocker, then there's a lot more discussions on this Dockers team making finals for sure. So would you Carlton, be shocked? Just curious. Would I you actually I be wouldn't shocked? Be shocked because I think Carlton again has play, has let opponents stay in the games a little bit more than I would like for a team with the firepower that they have. And so they barely made shocked. the eight last year, right? Like well, they the made it. They faced a they faced a Richmond team that was down three road that was down three rotations halfway through the halfway through the second quarter, and Richmond almost nipped them. And I know Richmond just beat Sydney and just beat Sydney. So how much that says on that, but this is a Carlton team. They've let opponents stay in the game a little bit longer than I, than I would like. So I, I think Carlton win this one, but it will not shock me if the Dockers pull it off for sure. So I wouldn't tip this either way. If I was a betting man, I would not be betting on this game. <laughs> I just want to watch it and enjoy it. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> this one's a fun one as the Western Bulldogs face the Geelong Cats. I'm I'm going to tip the Cats in this one. I think the Cats' defensive structure will give some headaches to a young, talented, but young forward line with, with some of the guys that they have. I think Bond's still kind of nursing that injury, which I think will kind of slow down the Western Bulldogs midfield. And I think Parfit, Bruin, and some of those youngsters, I think will have it. And I don't think the doggies have anything. If the ball goes forward, there's nobody that's going to stop Tommy Hawkins, Jeremy Cameron, Tyson Stengel, and Brian Myers. Somebody's going to kick goals. The cat's just a little too good for me on this one. So I have the cats. Call, call me. A, I, I can't hope against my team. And I, if I wish them to win, they're going to lose. So I'm, t- I'm actually tipping the Bulldogs on this one. I think every team has a letdown week. And for me, this is one of those things. If, to call back to earlier, who would you rather lose to? And if you're going to lose to anybody, I'd, I'd lose to a Bulldogs team that's probably a top eight squad, but probably not pushing top four. And then you get your head right, get get back home and, and, and get it figured out. But if you have to drop one, it just feels to me like a game that could be dropped. So, yeah, I, I, I'm I, – Against my heart, my, my brain says Bulldogs, my heart says Cats. And I'm I've, going I've with done, my brain. I've done that before. I've done that tip where I tip against and I tell people, I, I said, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a win-win situation. If I get the tip wrong, at least my team wins. If I get the tip right, then at least I tipped right. So it's a win-win either way. So yep. it's not a problem. <laughs> we'll jump up to Mount Mark up in the Adelaide Hills as Gold Coast host the GWS Giants. How, who, who do you like in this one? Good game. I think GWS is flying too high. I don't think I don't think Gold Coast can get it done with a with a first year coach. He's not a first year coach, but first year new organization coach. Um, but boy, this this is setting up. It could be a week of upsets. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens. But I'm t- I, I would tip the GWS. They just look like they're they're the complete package this year. Whitfield's got it together. He stays healthy. Tom Green, they're coming off a bye. They're fresh. Legs are fresh. They're going to be good to go. I, I I can't see it happening. And then as soon as you say that, if it could happen, you got Tuke Miller on the other side, and they're hungry. So, 
Yeah. Well, I believe Jared Witts is still is still not playing, and they have not Gold Coast has not won a game when Jared Witts has not played. So I'm going to tip GWS in this one, not just for that funny, funny odd statistic, but I just think that I just think Gold Coast again. I I know a lot of people were high on them talking about Gold Coast making finals this year. I think Dema Hardwick is going to take at least a season to a season and a half to get his full system into this group. I, I still think there's going to be some bumps. There's this is still a young Growing roster things. that's super talented. But his style is not is not something you're going to be able to learn like that. I'm going to tip GW in this in this one. I think Coach Kingsley has got these these gentlemen cherry ripe right now. My only worry is are they peaking too early? Are they playing their best footy too early in the season? So GWS in this one, but a cracking game up at Mount Barker. Cannot wait for that one. Back to the Adel- back to Norwood Oval as Richmond hosts the Saint Kilda Saints on this one. I will tip the Saints. The injuries, the injury list is coming out with both Lynch and Balta being out. Who's going to kick the goals for Richmond? I, I just worry that this is one of those St. Kilda is catching Richmond at the perfect time. I have the Saints. I have the Saints as well. Yeah, I think they're just going to rally. They're going to get it together. Rossi's going to have it right. And uh, yeah, Saint, Saints are going to win. Their midfield looks good. Like They, they really do. They, they, they're playing hard footy and I, I like hard footy. So mm-hmm. I, 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 tip, I tip the Saints. So. Yeah, and then and then the the, the piece de resistance is is Jack Ginevan facing his own as the Hawthorne Hawks take on the Collingwood Magpies. The Pies kind of found their form a little bit last week. I I think they're they're going to come into this game. Hawthorne, a few of the injuries and a and a part of the ground that Collingwood kind of needs some momentum. So it's kind of perfect for the Pies here. I like the Pies in this one. I think the Hawks will give them a scare early, but I think the Pies just too good. <sighs> I think I'm going to go with the upset on this. All I think right. we're looking at what it's at the end of the year, and I, I'm going to catch a lot of flack for this based on preseason expectations. <laughs> I think this is power rankings end of the year, last week of the regular season, nine versus 10 matchup. Hawthorne versus the Hawthorne versus uh, the, the Magpies. So I'm going to tip the tip the uh, the Hawthorne for the uh, the Hawks for the win. Yeah, definitely for sure. I, I I don't mind that. I don't mind that. This this could be the perfect situation again. Hawthorne a scrappy bunch. Collingwood, have they figured it out? Are yet? they as they, good are, as we thought? Or, yeah, or did they capitalize on a weekend Brisbane team? So I I don't mind that. I don't mind that tip. Yeah, did all, they catch though. lightning in a bottle and they were a one hit wonder? And you know what? Prove me wrong, and I'm happy to eat my hat and be wrong about it. And I know the Collingwood Army would be up in arms to hear it, but. <laughs> all you got to do is prove it. That's all you got to do. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. I, I completely agree with you on that one. Well, Ben, that is it. That is all nine games tipped. That is it for the podcast. It is so great to have you on. And again, for those that have listened to the podcast, that they know I talk about the Des Moines Roosters all the time, and it's always fun to have some guys here to talk with it. So I appreciate you coming on the podcast. It's been fantastic having a chat with you. Thanks for hosting. Happy to be here and hope we can do it again. And we will definitely see. I, I I got a few rounds still open. So worst case scenario, we might, we might have you on a little bit later on in the year. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for another episode of Donnie's Disposals. Again, keep an eye out more state league coverage and a fun few interviews that I've got lined up that I'm looking to get out here very, very soon. So keep an eye out more footy coverage to hit your ears very soon. We'll be back again very, very soon.